Xinhua News Agency. So uh, today we will continue our live report on the World Museum Day. Earlier, my colleague have shown very fascinating and interesting museum in Beijing, Shanghai, and Berlin. So now it's our turn. Also, this year marks 100 year anniversary of the Great October Revolution that brought the Communist Party to power not only here in Russia but also in a number of countries around the globe like China or Cuba. So today we're going to introduce you to one of the most significant places in Russian history, situated just 10 kilometers down south from Moscow oh, city. Ready? Okay, let's go. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Can you Wait. Hello, this is live broadcast from Moscow region, Russia. Me, Naida Azizova. Zhenjun with Xinhua News Agency. So now we will continue our global live report on the World Museum Day. Previously, my uh, colleagues have presented quite interesting museum in Beijing, Shanghai, and Berlin. So now it's our turn. Awesome, Jen. And this, is, this year marks 100 uh, year anniversary of the great October Revolution that brought the Communist Party to power not only here in Russia but also in a number of countries around the globe like China or Cuba. Uh, so today we're going to introduce you to one of the most significant places in Russian history situated just 10 kilometers down south from Moscow city. This luxurious estate is known as Vladimir Lenin's Dacha or Summer House it was nationalized in 1918 after the Great October Revolution when the young Soviet government moved from St. Petersburg, back then Petrograd, here in Moscow. Yes, that's true. And uh, it is like 32 kilometers south of Kremlin. Right. And uh, it's uh, quite near to the airport, mm -hmm. Mukovo. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is uh, called Gorky Leninsky in Russian and which literally means Lenin's high hills. And do you have any idea why the high hills? We don't see any like mountains here. Uh, well, actually, we are standing in a uh, high land. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. And the whole terrain, I can say, it's not even, it's like ups and downs, not like very high hills, but slightly high hills mm -hmm. and slightly little downs. Yes. And let me um, add a little more about the period of history uh, which is linked to um, Lenin's presence here. In September 1918, the Soviet leader was healing here after uh, a failed assassination attempt. He spent a lot of time here as, uh, as his health declined uh, over the following years. So uh, I would um, recommend us to walk inside and uh, continue um, explaining about the whole um, events that happened here uh, inside. Yes, uh, this area, uh, this museum is nat was nationalized um, and it, was, it became a national museum in 1938. And in the Soviet period, it became a quite popular tourist site for the Soviet citizens. That's true. That, well, you can tell because that was a Soviet Union, which was uh, totally influenced with the communist agenda. But uh, let me tell you that on May 15, uh, 1923, uh, Lenin followed medical advice from his doctors and left Moscow, Kremlin, when he was residing at the time for Gorky, for this place, he lived here um, in a semi-retirement until his death in January 21st, uh, 1924. So that's approximately, well, roughly one year. Mm -hmm. So he spent here only one year. And he uh, suffered three strokes, and his uh, health, health is, was not uh, very good. Mm -hmm. And he, his wife, uh, Nadezhda, was taking care of him. Yes, she, she was living here basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we just entered one of the key rooms in this um, mansion where um, Lenin was living his last days. What does it look like, Jen? Well, it's like a telephone room, obviously. So, uh, do you know what's special? 
Of I this. can tell you what's special. I have never seen any phone devices this big. Mm -hmm. That's first. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, this one was the first phone for a connection with the Kremlin that Lenin used. So later on he complained about the connection quality and you can see his complaints here on this little bureau. So here he says, well, the connection is very good. Uh, are they sabotaging me? He was joking, of course. And uh, after a number of complaints from Lenin, they had to replace. No, they didn't replace it, but they just added this um, um, dynamic, I would say, to improve the um, quality of the sound and make it um, louder, but it didn't help. So after all, the third device mm -hmm. appeared. And uh, you, can, you can tell it's different from the mm -hmm. rest, right? Those mm -hmm. are wooden. And this is from Ebony. Yes, a big metal tick. And it's the direct lie to the Kremlin, right? Right. Which never worked properly, though. <laughs> you know. OK, let's go um, to another room. Yes, because uh, at that time, uh, Lenin uh, was self-retirement. Uh, so yeah, there was se semi-retirement. Uh -huh. I think, do you think he was working or he was enjoying himself mostly during that time? He as was a sick man, right? Uh, he was ill. Yes, but as far as I know, uh, he's, uh, he works very hard. So maybe even in his final years, he still worked a lot. And probably, and even when he had some time for mm -hmm. rest, he would probably combine it, he would be mm -hmm. combining it with some work. Like, so where are we going now? What is this? Wow. It's a quite cozy and uh, big room. I think that's it, the biggest room in this museum, maybe. That looks very, very artistic, actually. I think um, Lenin was very, very keen on uh, art objects. And um, see, we, we witnessed some sculptures here, some very de decorative um, luxurious um, furniture. And even a piano. Yes. He, did he play piano, you think? Uh, yes, he did, and he played quite well. And I know of a, per a person who can tell us more about his tastes in mm -hmm. uh, music. Um, uh, I, I'll ask my, my cameraman to uh, move here so I could introduce Svetlana. Miralova, who is probably the most knowing person here about Lenin and his life and his personal uh, preferences. So uh, thank you very much for being with us. Did Lenin play piano? <laughs> Why is this here? His mother was a good musician and she uh, teaching, she was teaching all children to play piano, but only girls continue to play uh, all boys, it was three brothers in the in, in family, they uh, escaped, they the, escaped the, classes. <laughs> the classes when they were about 10 or 11 years old. Um, but Lenin liked music very much, especially Beethoven and Tchaikovsky, uh, but m music um, made him very exciting. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he couldn't uh, stay in the hall until the end of uh, play because mm -hmm. it was too difficult to about emotion with him. Mm -hmm. And what was, what was his favorite composition? Beethoven. Uh, uh, he said, uh, there is nothing better than appassionata. OK. And um, what else tells us uh, about his uh, preferences in this room? Can you show us maybe uh, some other like things uh, here? Uh, watching film. Right. Yeah. And we have a film projector here. Mm -hmm. uh, you see this house is very luxury. It's right. because the last owner is in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. She was 142 million in Russia. Right. Uh, and uh, all, nearly everything in this house belonged to her. Mm -hmm. So uh, can we say that Lenin inherited this uh, film projector from the previous owner, which was Zinaida yes. Marozova? Okay. And Lenin uh, watched here uh, Charlie Chaplin film, mm. uh, read uh, Diablos, it's about children film. 
Uh, and he liked document, documentary films. That like chronicles. Did. Yes, chronicles. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and and uh, where, where exactly, can, it, can you t uh, show us the place where he would put uh, a screen for this yes. projector? You can see also, uh, on the screen uh, was on this wall. So the um, screen was hung on those yes. hookers? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. And was it like um, a closed pit? Was it uh, like synthetic film? What kind of quality was this screen? A uh, ah, it's textile, yes. Just normal textile? Yes, it's just normal textile. And as case. far as we know, he hated to change anything since mm -hmm. he moved here. Mm -hmm. And I even know uh, this very, very famous story, which is almost a legend by now, that when he just moved here, one of his ministers who <laughs> was in charge of even, I guess, his health, well, yeah. well-being, Joseph Stalin, everybody yeah. knows Joseph Stalin, right? Uh, he tried to remove this, yes, it's this, true. this picture, uh, which depicts uh, some cemetery. Yes, you it's uh, the, the tombs, the uh, old orthodoxy, yes, and the church on the floor. Yes. So uh, he thought that was too depressing yes. for uh, Lenin, who just suffered from an assassination attempt, to see this uh, that despairing picture every time. So what did he do? Yes, uh, Lenin insisted. The picture put on this place again. Like back. Put, put it back? Yes, put it back. Any punishment for Joseph Stalin? No, of course not. Lenin wasn't uh, um, tyrant. He wasn't tyrant. <laughs> tyrant. No. So, uh, Lenin likes films a lot, right? Yes. He, uh, what kind of films? Uh, uh, he liked chronicle film very much. Uh, as we know, one of the uh, most um, Favorite? Uh, no, yes, favorite film was a film f about uh, Ford plan, mm -hmm. how to make process. For what? Uh, mm, it was film, chronicle film uh, from uh, Ford's plan. Ford's plan. Yes. Пятилетка? Нет, это заводы Форда. Ah, about the plants and factories. Plants, yes, um, and factories for Henry Ford. So he was very much interested in the life of working class, yes. working people. And the Why technical is that? process. Did he consider too. them to be his main supporting power, or did he want to improve their life conditions, mm. well-being, or what was <laughs> the reason behind? Because he wasn't himself from mm. the working family. He was from a quite yes. educated yes. and uh, yes. like true. at least middle class. Yes, but uh, he, uh, he uh, imagine he was imagining about uh, the ideal society for everybody. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. The utopia. Yes, yes, yes. It's true. It's true. Actually, if if you uh, if anybody uh, read uh, Lenin's book, uh, The State and Revolution, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you understand that Lenin want to make wanted to make utopia. The ideal society. The idea, yes, because uh, he, uh, he dreamed about people who is good educated and created a new things and new social Equal opportunities yeah. for everyone, right? Yes. And that's why he had a huge library. And we're going to witness a little part of it, just a little part, but very significant because this library uh, has witnessed the uh, revolutionary leader himself uh, so, I can probably, can you say that those are the books he touched himself? Yes. Okay, let's see them. Of course, not every, every book. But most of but them. But most of them, yes, it's true. And let's check out what kind of books are here. Uh, some, book, some books belong to Morozova yet. Okay, so you inherited the yes. books from some of the books from Morozov as, yes. as well. Yes, yes, and you you can. I, I see encyclopedia. Yes, encyclopedia is normal for state library right. because you stayed alone, of, uh, far from city, you couldn't uh, uh, buy something, right. so you need a lot of encyclopedia. Yes. And here we have uh, first. Uh, uh, collection of Lenin's works. The complete collection, which was published uh, while he was still alive. Yes. 
And I can see some books about China, and they are in Chinese. Can yes. you <laughs> say, can you tell us what does it say, Rain? Uh, yes, um, it's about uh, Chinese-related books, and uh, it's about uh, the uh, how uh, do Chinese people fight against imperialism? And Lenin pays quite close attention to the Chinese uh, fighting during that time. And can, can we tell that this is some kind of manual for the uh, Chinese how to make a revolution? Yes, uh, that's about uh, like how Chinese uh, like uh, fought against uh, imperialism uh, during nineteen. Um, the beginning of the 20th century. Interesting. So, guys, you know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, as far as I know, um, the uh, printing, um, the printing color was uh, not very good quality back then, mm -hmm. which meant that when you were looking uh, into the uh, books, like reading in them, touching them, they would leave some marks. Uh, the, the, the color would leave some marks on your um, hands and fingers. Mm -hmm. And here, why we have this hand basin right next door to the library. Wow, it's a kind of French style, right? I think so. Is it French style? Can, I, can you no, tell us about it's, it? it's um, English. English style. It's English style, English. yes, it's Johnson and Johnson. And uh, so everything, because the porcelain, the, 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 the top, yes, everything is English. Yes, the last owner was richest woman in Russia, and she wanted only the best for her house. Oh, so that and was... But uh, that time, the English sanitizer was the best. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and I can see some very interesting bureau over there. Yes. It was uh, um, easy to see Lenin, if you want. Uh, and sometimes people come and... Um, um, Made uh, uh, yes some gifts, some gifts for some Lenin. Gifts. Yes, yes, but all of them it's handmade. This one is actually very interesting. If you pay attention, it depicts three working classes. Yes, it's so true. So here, soldiers, it's a military. Uh -huh. Yes. Then Worker. we have a working class wow. depicted by two workers with hammer, and here there is a. Uh, Agriculture, this is peasant. Yeah. And, and this is very interesting things. It's uh, a globe of Soviet Russia. Right, this is the. the it's globe, but only one country. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. This yes. is very interesting. You yes. can't see it unless you put a lot of light on it. And what does it say? Uh, all pro uh, working people uh, united. Yes. I, I think that was the slogan yeah. that they had on old Soviet currency. Yeah. Is it true? No. Yes. So um, this is another gift. And you can tell by the decor that it uh, belongs to the Central Asian uh, region. It's typical, the, um, the carving, the uh, ornament, everything. And if you, I am not sure if you can still see this, uh, pentagram. It's uh, it's only visible if you see if you look at it uh, at at a, at a special angle. Maybe it's uh, a symbol of Red Army. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. the, the, the the star was a symbol of the Soviet mm -hmm. Army, and the Soviet state as well. Mm -hmm. It was uh, a national symbol. Mm -hmm. Is that from Uzbekistan? Yes, it's from Samarkand. Ah, well, from Samarkand. Yes. And I know that Soviet had a long, long, long fight with the local, um, um, not partisans, but um, very rich people who didn't want to adopt the uh, old, the, 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 who didn't want to adopt the new communist way of life and ideolo ideology. He wanted just to keep living their old feudal uh, rules. Now, where do we go next? Upstairs. Uh, let's go upstairs. Mm -hmm. So you, you show the way. That's quite, uh, yes, quite sure. a big house. And we will have to sit on. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Well, it's 
uh, quite impressive museum, and uh, which has a lot of uh, personal stuff of Lenin. And uh, do you feel that a spirit of Lenin is still here somehow? Do you feel like uh, there's some special ore in this place. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, because a lot of things related with Soviet and, uh, and like uh, the uh, wooden chair, we just saw that uh, it um, shows that how powerful the Soviet Union was and because it has uh, 15 Soviet republics mm -hmm. and Uzbekistan is definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. And I think it joined the Soviet Union in 1924. Just yes, uh, yes, around uh, that time. Yes, around that time. This is quite beautiful, right? Yes. Like all the furniture, all the decor, all the even even the sellings here are so high. Well, what's the height of the sellings? About four. Four meters. Yes. Uh, mm. It seems to me that even more, even higher than that, because I actually feel very, very small in here. <laughs> no, because the architect who reconstructed the house for Morozova mm -hmm. was very talented person. Actually, I heard that st story. Ma Mi Mikhail Schechter, right? Fyodor. Fyodor Schechter, sorry. And he was uh, one of the main architects in Tsarist Russia and favorite of the Tsar himself. No, 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 he wasn't a favorite maybe for Tsar, but he was very um, famous and he built a lot for Marozov family. It was a big family of Russian businessmen. Interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of study room. Yes, it's study. Lenin uh, wrote in Gorky uh, about uh, 900 uh, articles. Wow, 900 articles. Yes. Whoa, it's a lot. I like the chair, actually. This is so beautiful. <laughs> so Lenin style, what I remember from my yes. childhood. Yes. And um, I think those items still, still remember the touch of uh, the uh, world working class leader, as uh, he's known here in, in Russia. You noticed anything? Well, here I saw a calendar, and uh, you can see it's already turned into yellow. And uh, because it's too old, right? Yes. And uh, do you know? Wow, this page stayed in January twenty-first, and it shows it's Monday, right? Uh, and we know what the date it is because I well, just mentioned. Yes, it's the day when Lenin passed away. Right. So, uh, and we could also see uh, the picture of a famous Russian writer and fictionist, play writer, uh, Chekhov. Chekhov, Anton Chekhov, uh -huh. and he was one of his favorite authors, right? Yes. And not to miss one very important detail here. This um, calendar is not a random choice. Uh, it, it was a tear-up calendar. Every day you had to tear up um, uh, page to reveal a new date, and this was the last time Lenin tore up the page with the date, which was January 20th, because on January 21st he died. And uh, you know, Naida, uh, uh, Chekhov is very famous in China, and oh, really? we have read several articles and uh, his fictions and playwrights, uh, like Uncle Vanya, mm -hmm. and also A Man in the Case. You know, right? Of course, uh, it's, it's a very famous, famous uh, <laughs> composition, very famous uh, uh -huh. a play. And uh, wh what is the most popular uh, Chekhov's um, composition, Chekhov's work with the Chinese people? Mm. Well, uh, because he is a bit left uh, leaned, mm -hmm. so uh, and just like those uh, works which uh, deprecated the Russians' lower class, that one was very famous in China. Of course. And here we are. This is probably the saddest room in the whole nation. It's a morning room. This is the room where Vladimir Lenin passed away. And I would like to ask the cameraman to um, show us closer the bed on which Lenin slept last. 
So Lenin died at the age of 53. Uh, that's relatively young, I would say. Yes. As we just mentioned, uh, his health uh, is getting worse and worse. Right. Uh, and he has suffered three strokes. And half of his body was paralyzed. Um, he couldn't move uh, part of his body. And here you can see uh, the mold of Lenin's hand palms and his skull. That was a normal tradition. That was a usual tradition that all these significant people, uh, like leaders, like uh, very famous uh, writers or comp composers, would be um, uh, making, made immortal in such a way. But this specific set was presented here to this museum by the wife of Vladimir Lenin, Nadezhda Krupska. That was her personal belonging. Oh. And she just gave it to, gave it to, to the, the museum, museum so the people could see um, how Lenin looked like in his last, last moments of mm -hmm. life. And also, now we have a uh, director of the museum and uh, Mr. Uh, Vladimir. Yes, and let's talk to you. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Владимир Дмитриевич, спасибо, что вы с нами. Расскажите, пожалуйста, о последних э, мгновениях Владимира Ильича и как его тело было перевезено в, да. в этой комнате на, на 21 января 1924 года Владимир Ильич скончался. И э, здесь в из этой было предварительное прощание с коллегами по партии. Здесь приезжал Сталин, приезжали Держинский, там ведущие партийные деятели прощались. Первое прощание было организовано здесь, в соседней комнате, был установлен гроб с телом Владимира Ильича Ленина. Владимир Дмитриевич, the director of the museum complex, says that it was here that all those uh, ministers and comrades of Lenin came to say their last goodbye to uh, the body of Lenin. It was here that later on um, the body was, the corpse was uh, trans transferred to, to the neighboring room because it was larger. So all those willing would, could, could come and see and uh, tell farewell to, to their favorite leader. Of course, he was favorite leader to the people. It was very popular back then. После тела Ленина на руках было доставлено на станцию Герасимова. Это в четырех километрах. Было много людей. Да, да, почесть была такая, да. And after that, uh, Lenin's body was carried on hands for four kilometers to the ne uh, ne nearby um, railway station to be ready to take off to Moscow. And that was some kind of uh, credit to Lenin. That was um, a tribute, an honor. The, uh, the, the last honor the people here wanted to, the Russians wanted to pay to Lenin, to their leader. Да, и как вы уже сказали, на специальном поезде был доставлен в Москву, где было организовано трехдневное прощание в колонном зале Дома Союзов. А, специальный поезд, он был, был специальный, специальный? Был траурный вагон, это был поезд для перевозки тела Ленина и со станции Герасимова в Москву. Был специальный поезд. From the uh, Gerasimov railway station, that's the closest to this place. In a special train, a morning train, so-called morning train, where was special carriage uh, for for the uh, equipped for for the transporting of body and uh, decorated and uh, morning colors and symbolics. The body was taken to um, uh, the column hall, the so-called column hall of the um, House of Unions. Uh, where it was stationed for three days and people could s uh, come and see uh, Lenin to say their last goodbye to you, to the world working class leader. Um, да, и после прощания в колонном зале Дома Союзов тело Ленина было перенесено в специально построенный мавзолей на Красном площади. Он был вначале изготовлен из дерева, а потом уже архитектором Чусевым был построен вот гранитный такое монументальное здание Мавзолей. 
And after three days of uh, being at the um, uh, at this uh, hall where people were saying goodbye to uh, to him, uh, the body of Lenin was transferred to the Red Square, to the mausoleum uh, where it is uh, rested right now. But back then, the mausoleum was made of wood, and later on, it was rebuilt in granite and stone. So let's follow further and uh, let's see. Uh, what are the other items that could tell us more about about Lenin? So it was here in this same room that um, the farewell was organized for Lenin, and where everybody who could come here it's 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 quite far for uh, to 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 get here from. Um, people living in Moscow city, but those from the surroundings could come here and say goodbye, farewell to you, the body of Lenin, uh, if they wanted to. And actually, I, I know that there is uh, another item in this room which has an interesting story. Well, Do you see that coach over there? Well, it's um, quite cozy coach. Absolutely, um, it's gorgeous. And uh, as far as I know, one of the Lenin's ministers, Lenin cabinet ministers, uh, slept over there well, the night the uh, the world le world class um, uh, world <laughs> the the, the uh, Soviet leader died. And do you have any idea who it was? Uh, was that Joseph Stalin? Yes, you oh. got it. That was Joseph Stalin dressing on this um, same coach, which once again was inherited from the previous owner, Zinaida Morozova. She was a very wealthy woman. When her, her husband, uh, the wealthy textile mag magnate, uh, Savo Morozov, died, he, she inherited 15 million rubles. Wow. Can you imagine what a huge oh, amount huge. of money that was? And so we are here. Luxurious bathroom. Yes, this is a bathroom. Some wish had a room size of. Yeah. And um, we it also know that it was here that uh, Lenin's body was washed the wow. last time after he died and uh, to be uh, ready to be taken to Moscow. And actually, it was opened by the surgeons here as well, as far as I heard. Mm -hmm. So it, it was here that the body was prepared for, for the mausoleum. Mm. But before, it had to be stationed in this hall, uh, in the column hall, so-called column hall, for uh, all the Moscovites and those, uh, the guests of the capital, who wanted to see their leader for the last time. Mm -hmm. And the uh, water supply system is, I think, was the uh, most advanced during that time. Right, that's true. So, this is pretty much it about this mansion, but there is a lot of interesting facts and information still to come. And um, first of all, I'd like to pay attention on this. It's not usual that you see those on both sides of the ladder. You would normally have them on one side, uh, which is um, like next to the wall, right? Opposite mm -hmm. to the wall. But here it was um, modified especially for Lenin when he had a heart attack and his um, half of his body paralyzed. So he, uh, that would help him to climb the ladder. Mm -hmm. uh, Specially designed for him. Yes, yes. So that was at a special mm -hmm. request. And here, do you know this lady on the wall? Well, it's just as you uh, mentioned, uh, she was the last pre revolution owner of this mansion. Uh, her name is uh, Malazova. Malozova. Malozova. And a uh, very, very famous and very rich. Uh, Businesswoman and an ardent supporter to the Bolsheviks, right? Yes, her so her husband, her husband uh, and she married three times, and he uh, her last husband 
was the head of police officer in mm -hmm. Moscow. Uh, who also supported the Bolsheviks. I don't think so. I think so. Oh. And here, here, this is another very, very interesting spot here. Uh, do you know what's so special about this clock? Well... Apart from it's very beautiful, of course. Mm, is there any, like... Mm, it has a very, very tragical symbolism here, because this is the exact time ah, when, when, the Lenin, Lenin when Lenin died. passed away, oh. and the clock was stopped uh, by the hand of his wife and comrade, mm -hmm. Nadezhda Krupska. So it was 10 to 7. That was the time. In the afternoon, right? I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, when Lenin died. Wow. That's a very sad, sad story. So this clock stopped at that time. Right. And uh, so shall we... Uh, and here again we see a royal, a piano, uh, another testament that Vladimir Lenin loved music. And also, as far as I know, his little sister lived with them. Mm -hmm. And here, Mayasha, yes. she lived uh, with, with the couple here, and she also played, um, she piano. Also played uh, piano, and she was very good at it. So, um, now let's follow on the outside mm -hmm. and see how the communist heritage and ideology has been preached further and uh, how is uh, what, what is the what, what, how people take interest mm -hmm. are they still coming here do they still take interest what do you think I think uh well, because this year is the uh, Jubilee of October Revolution, and uh, there are a lot of um, memorial events and uh, his uh, history seminars mm -hmm. uh, dedicated to the event. So a lot of people just raise more interest about the October Revolution. Oh, and we could see... Uh, uh -huh. Yes, we can. Uh -huh. We can uh, see. We can see a samovar there, actually. But yeah, this uh, is this is a normal mm -hmm. Russian, usual Russian symbol. Yes. But I can see some uh, inscriptions on, in, in Chinese over there. Oh, can you tell us about them? Well, let's get a bit closer, and well, we could see uh, the small tree uh, planted by some Chinese delegation who uh, visited this. Uh, Museum, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a very popular tourist site for Chinese visitors because uh, in China, Lenin is just very, very famous, and uh, you know, Marxism and Leninism are uh, one of the most important ideologies. Uh, so, so it's 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 a really big deal for Chinese people. This whole museum, this whole history, the the uh, the way the uh, revolutionary thought developed. Yes, uh, because uh, after the October Revolution, an idea of communism spread to China, and um, uh, commun communism had had influenced many high-profile people, Chinese people there. I see there are a lot of Chinese uh, planted. Uh, there are lots of. Um, Clients planted by Chinese um, visitors, mm -hmm. and I let me bring here uh, some statistics. Earlier, we spoke to one of the managers of this uh, museum complex who shared uh, some statistics with us. Basically, he told us that around 140,000 visitors came here over the last year. Most of them Russians, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, some some 15,000 uh, visitors were. Uh, foreign, foreign tourists, and do you know uh, what was the number of the Chinese visitors? I think Chinese? it's around twenty thousand. You got it. Mm -hmm. It was uh, twenty to twenty and a half thousand visitors, and but 
I have to say here that after the Soviet Union collapsed, this place was slowly coming to decline. And as they say here, the worst year was 2011, when the number of tourists dropped to 11,000 a year. Can you imagine that? Wow. And that compared to almost a million visitors annually during the Soviet era. So million visitors every year during the Soviet era period mm -hmm. and then after the Soviet Union collapse you just have you know slightly more than 11,000 visitors annually. Mm -hmm. Wow we are now heading to a famous garage of yes. Lenin. This is the garage and this is the major artifact here. Wow. Uh, first of all there were two silver ghost Rolls Royces. This is a silver ghost Rolls Royce and uh, there were two uh, cars like that in Lenin's garage, and they were Vladimir Ilyich, mm -hmm. um, special pride and joy. Mm -hmm. So one of them, uh, this one, mm -hmm. was equipped. Uh, I would like to ask the cameraman to show the, uh, the wheels, the track. So this one was equipped with so-called Kegras truck, which is a kind of rubber or canvas continuous truck uh, that uses a flexible belt rather than interlocking metal segments. It could be turned into a half truck, which just like this kind. It's like a tank. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and uh, you know why why Lenin was having this? Maybe because of the bad trans transportation, bad road, so exactly. they adapted the this, car. This this car is specifically designed for the uh, rough and soft terrain. Actually, it was uh, modified, it was bought in England, uh, because Rolls Royce is, yeah. uh, is an English. And uh, I think this is uh, especially for the snow roads. Yeah, this is for snow, for um, soft and rough ground. And uh, it was redone in Putila factory, Russia's Petrograd. The chassis were put on caterpillars over there, and uh, the front wheels were fixed with skis.